What's happening, fam? No. What's happening? I'm sorry. LA All Movement still moving. Book is entitled Lessons from a Non Custodial Father at Amazon, Kindle, and Create Space. A link will be in the description box below. This video is entitled She's Gotta Have It, Episode 7 and 8 Review. The reason I put 7 and 8 together because I, I watched 7 and I had to watch 8 uh, and I was going to do them separately, but it took too long, so I'm putting them together. <laughs> Plus, they're intertwined to me um, because 7 is like the story of some of the characters, right? The, the guys, um, um, Greer and Jamie. Not so much Mars, but, you know, and, and her little hex. And eight is, you see how it's, how it's affected in their lives, you know, and what goes on with them. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to interject the characters. So we start with Nola. Right, so this is how Nola meets these guys in these different ways, and the thing about it is, um, they approach Nola in a, to to a degree, you know, that's what men do, but not only did they approach her, you know, they didn't know about, they knew about the uh, that she was single, she was out dating, but they all assumed that you know, they were good guys and they were good catches, right? So she would pick one. Didn't happen. They didn't know that she was out, out in them streets, right? But between seven and eight, even with her friend Shanika, you know, she's, it seemed like she's coming to grips with, for one, you can't act like a little high school girl. And you got to be an adult. So you see this little, this little, you know, panic attack of, you know, I can I can just be young and free and let it all flow and everything good is going to happen to me. And then that goes into Mars' sister telling her, you know, you're going to have some issues, right? And because this bad luck has come into her life, this is her first, it's not, maybe not her first, but this is her time dealing with adversity and she's really folding under pressure because everything is just so easy breezy for her because she gets so many breaks in life. You know, as far as she got men to help her and take care of her. She got her family to take care of her. She got, pay, she pays rent at, 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 a, at, a, at a modest price compared to everybody else. She keeps, she's let, she's allowed to get away with nonsense that normal people wouldn't get away with. And, but when people, when she's confronted with that, like, yo, get it together. You too old for this. Then she's like, oh. I got to be grown real fast. And you see the, the the more responsible, even though people are flawed, ladies in her life in particular, patting her on the back for actually, um, ah, my nose has been itching, out, I've been, I had a cold. Um, her um, getting on her grind and actually not trying to be a kid and beg and plead for everybody to do something for her. So... That's dope to me, you know. Her, her and Shanika talking, you know, that you know they're not they weren't able to watch each other, be there for each other. That's one thing. You know, with Nola um and the guy, the, the review for her work, she was disjointed all over the place because she was too worried about those guys. The other thing about, you know, like going back to Mars' sister. You know, the minute that she she does her the the, the cleansing, uh, Yoruba cleansing, Nola starts to quote unquote have better luck. You know, so I'll see nine and ten, right? But I just think she just uh, she's not good at making decisions. Now Jamie, because of seven and eight, you know Jamie's a guy who basically is from the hood. Um, and he came up and then him and his wife are split but they're together and jamie just looks like a sloppy player to me you know and at first it's a loveless marriage that's how it's look you know so it's like they're trying to to make the best out of it for their son because he's conflicted because guess what 
he wants to be free and be with Nola, so I thought at first in seven. But when eight came and his wife was like, you always chasing skirts. You, you fell in love with this one, you fell in love with that one before that, you fell in love with that one before that. So to me, Jamie's just a sloppy player. Like, you know, he just got a wandering soul. Not necessarily a wandering eye. He just fall in love at first sight with the next new piece of woman because his wife is quote unquote boring. And I think the situation with his wife comes comes the terms because it's karma in her sense because she kept feeling like I made you. I I gave you cachet. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't even be in this upper class because I pulled you from the gutter, you little thug. But the problem is he, he, he told her, I brought you excitement, but you ain't that exciting, so I got to go get excitement, basically. Right, so, and it, and it offends her, but the thing about her is, the problem is she's a one-trick pony. Same thing when she's like, I gave you a son. It's like, you came from an upper-class family. You went slumming to get Jamie. You married him. He became an upper-class man and took care of you, and all you have to say is, you came from an upper-class family. It's not that you did anything in particular. You rolled your family's coattails to, and basically you wanted to say upgraded a guy, but that's the thing about life. It makes you, you have to update your resume. And she never updated her resume because she's living off of her family name and now her husband's success. And she's saying she did it all because she was in a rich family. So, okay. And, you know, now her son benefits off of that. Okay, whatever. Son's kind of cool. I like him playing the guitar like the, like Jimi Hendrix, damn near. That was, that was dope. Greer. Greer. Pretty boy slash fuck boy. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm pretty and I'm the woes of being pretty. And he takes Nola out to a restaurant where he's smashing other chicks. Another sloppy player, right? But the thing about that with Nola is, I don't understand how she could get uncomfortable with a guy smashing other chicks because she's smashing other dudes and she has no problem, you know, calling Greer over street and so whatever, right? So she's calling, and that's the second guy she did that to because she called, uh, oh, Jamie Mars. So, she's uncomfortable, but but Greer makes her uncomfortable, but that's an excuse to me because she's uncomfortable with commitment because Greer wants commitment and she runs off. But Greer, you know, tragic mulatto, basically, as a guy, you know, I'm good looking, my, my, I'm biracial, but I'll never be black enough, but I'm hanging around with these white people, but you already know they don't accept, you're never going to be white enough, but it's only the black enough argument and... Like, here we go. So he's not necessarily conflicted with that. He's accepted what it is on the white end and mad on the black end because he never, quote unquote, fits in. But, but Greer won't say that he's an opportunist. You know, and which, which plays into the fact of him and his dating, you know, because he, he wants to let Nola know basically in a passive aggressive way. I got other chicks, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and she she catches on to it, and then, oh, I'm sorry, don't be mad at me. Like, yeah, whatever. You're a sloppy player. So you can't be taken seriously. You can't want a girl anyways to be your girl when you're taking her around the other girls you smashing. Like, that's stupid. But I, I think Greer's stupid. <laughs> uh, <laughs> beyond that, Mars. Mars is like the little errand boy. He's trying to show her with his action how much he loves her, right? And so he's using his sister. He's using uh, his, his his bike, his 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 internet skills to chase down this Onyx cat and tell her who it is and how he knows and spreading around that it's her doing the street art to the friend. And people are, you know, getting her quote-unquote confidence back because other people are digging that work. And he's trying to show her that he's down for her, basically. But the problem with that is, is Mars played itself. Like, you smashed a friend. You smashed the, 
you sm you smash the homie, but you want everybody to work cohesively for you because you love her and you don't like you got, you doing too much, B. You doing too much. And everybody likes Grit, and that's the funny not Grit, but Mars. But see, the funny thing about the Mars character, me that people say they like Mars character, is Mars character is the same type of dude that these women fall for, like it's like the 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 art dealer fell for, just like quote unquote Nola fell for, but then f fell for him, Jesus. Uh, but fall for these guys, and then when they get with these guys, you sorry, you're still living at home with your mama, Yo, you got a bunch of joys, you're not responsible, blah, 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 blah. So, ridiculous. That's why, like, when I look at the camera, I'm like, come on, man. You know, you, you can't be taken seriously. But I think her, him and Nola fit together because they both are. I, I can't take either one of them seriously. I think that's the closest match because both of them are on each level each other's level in my opinion that's they nola ain't on Grizz level and she ain't on jamie's level as far as adult wise and being able to handle adult situations um oh, that's, that's something else i wanted to touch on about that the the, the money in fact joe's character that was interesting to see them be related and have that history. I like Fat Joe in this thing because I, I he just brought a whole different side of Fat Joe. Like you an actor, Fat Joe. You you really an actor, Don Cartagena. Like I, I I fucks with you on that. You know, him living, you know, with um the 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 ghost of his past and the ghost of his present, but playing on the aspect of. His time has been up and he played out. And all he has to hold on to is, is the fact that he was cool at one time. And that's the, all he can hold on to when it comes to Jamie and other people. You know, I'm cool. I used to be cool. I'm still cool. And it's, it's really ripping him apart because he can't evolve. Which is in some ways why he doesn't like his cousin Jamie, right? Because his cousin Jamie went from streets to a deluxe apartment in the sky, right? And he's just in the slums. Saying, you know, I, I did a bid for you, blah, blah, blah. But the thing about the bid is when you got kids doing crime for you, you might do the adult time as part of the game. So don't try to hold that over people's heads, right? But you got to you, you gotta say what it is. Um, I like that part of it. I really did. You know, the fact that, that Jamie used his... Used his silent business to get out of the business to give Nola cash and give her her painting back. See, these guys are stand-up guys in some ways and they dirt bags in others. But I think you can say the same about Nola. She's a stand-up woman in some ways. She's a dirt bag in others. You know what I'm saying? So this is why I see they, they all are basically alike. For the most part. Ironically, I would say Opal is probably the, the only sane damn person in the damn thing. You know. And when it goes back to the family aspect, you could you could basically pinpoint Nola's impulsive behavior on her dad because it was a reference that, you know, back in the day he was a cokehead. So in some ways she acts just like that addict. Joe, so you know, I'm out. I'm out. Peace.